The American West. Vast and wild. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need any roads. Oh yeah, that's me. Let's back it up and explain how I got here. Prepare to get a little mud on your boots as we see how simulation is taking us off the beaten path. I'm Miss Emma Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. Polaris started in 1954. Rider-driven innovation is what drives us. Our company mission, our vision is to think outside, live the riding experience, and work to make it better. So everybody that works at Polaris, people that you see inside here or outside of the shop, uh, they all ride the product. So then how are you managing to use simulation earlier on in the design cycle? Uh, so this is an ecosystem of ANSYS tools. Uh, one of the things that we are working on now is to use these tools earlier in the process, mm -hmm. uh, even before we build the development build. The cost to fix an error or an issue is way higher once you start building physical prototypes. Uh, this is the most cost-effective way of building a product, and this is how we deliver the most thrilling product for our customers to let them get outside and think outside. Now let's chat about the Razer XP from earlier. We took a lot of inspiration from our customers because that has been such a successful product for us uh, in the past, but it was time to refresh it. So uh, we gave it a rugged design, more comfort, and more capability. And that's really where simulation came into play. You know, our chassis is about 25% stronger or stiffer than it was in the past. And that was all with simulation. We were able to tell from the inputs and what we needed out of the chassis, we were able to make a completely boltless, fully welded chassis that was much stronger and then a better experience for the customer. And I understand you're going to feel that out on the trail today. I'm smiling already. Yeah, I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah, I'm going to get behind the wheel of it um, in a bit. So, do you have any tips? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all caught up, let's go. One thing is abundantly clear, this is not your typical all-terrain vehicle. Sorry about the mud, first of all. Hey, don't worry about that detail. So we came around that corner, it was just a massive pile of mud. That is a true statement. And yes. uh, we do build off-road vehicles that are used to going through mud, so no That's problem true. at all. Let's talk about the engine. How different is it from the previous model before? We started with kind of some of the baseline two-cylinder parallel twin engine design that we had in the old Razor XP 1000. But the guys did a heck of a lot of work thinking about like fluid flows, computational fluid dynamics, like how does air come in and exit the engine so that we could really optimize the head, the combustion chamber design, the intake and exhaust tracks to be able to build a little bit more power actually. And in doing that, you know, there was a lot of flow work that also went into the CVT side because what a lot of people kind of forget is that the clutch is almost in many cases will flow more air than the engine itself does. Yeah, in an off-road environment, we definitely deal with a lot of challenge. And all of our vehicles are actually rear engine mounted. If you think about the dust and the water, we have to cool the engine, we gotta get air to our clutching and drive line. So what you're seeing here is a CFD analysis. What we're looking at is streamlines. This is air going into the radiator. The engine needs to be kept cool. So we're sizing the radiator. We're looking at the amount of air going into this area. All the analysis pointed us to a redesign effort, which helped us pull in twice as much air that we did in the previous generation product. So this is the air intake for the CVT. Okay. Uh, if you trace this down, right. it's the airflow going into the clutch. Uh -huh. uh, our simulations have shown that this is the location mm -hmm. where you can get the cleanest air possible. What an incredible advantage of simulation. Keeping these vehicles up and running in some of the most harsh environments is complicated, far more than your typical daily driver. But it is a necessity here, as you cannot sacrifice performance and you can't afford to break down miles from the nearest cell phone tower. Spend time with friends and family and, and build memories that last a lifetime. 
You know, a lot of the things that we hear and see from people as they go out, you get to experience something like this. And years later, people will like come and tell us these stories about like how they bonded, they made better friendships. And, and a lot of it was due to the lifestyle they can find in the off-road. Yeah. And a huge part of that is just putting smiles on faces when people, you know, step down on the skinny pedal. And uh, I think as you got to experience, it works pretty good. I was smiling behind the helmet for sure, yeah. <laughs> and I'm still smiling. The off-road is definitely an exhilarating experience, but it's not always easy. As we continue further north to Canada, Potential Motors is poised to show us what driver assistant technology could mean for off-road mobility. So most vehicles today are very reactive in nature, so the vehicle drives along, you can use the wheel to kind of touch and feel the surface to understand mm -hmm. what it's driving over. It's either that or the person has to go and kind of manually switch into different modes. So really what we're looking at is how do you actually make a more proactive system that uses the cameras to you know, make it so that the vehicle isn't just touch and feel the ground, but it's actually looking ahead and understanding the conditions that it's coming up upon. I did about 20 years of professional software development, uh, actually in the ocean mapping space. Mm -hmm. So doing a lot of remote sensing uh, just underwater, wow. uh, which is interesting. And yeah, I find myself here because actually it, it translates quite well. We're basically now just doing remote sensing on a vehicle. Right, similar. Yep. Just above ground. Just above ground now, <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Tell me a little bit more about the P0. So the P0 is how to pack the most technology into an <laughs> off-road electric vehicle. So I mean, this is a quad motor system. It has you know, complete software control over every aspect of the vehicle, which you know, at the time was really important for us because we couldn't really just go out and buy a vehicle. This is what we had to do, is actually build our own platform to do that testing with. And in that, we were able to build out what we kind of saw the future of, I guess, a software-defined vehicle looking like in EVs. Tell us how simulation is helping you prepare for the unknown. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time in simulation trying to figure out, you know, everything from what is the LiDAR going to see to how is the chassis going to react. Mm -hmm. So this vehicle itself is our own platform. We built it from scratch uh, because we really wanted a software-defined vehicle for off-road. And surprisingly enough, there isn't one available for us to just use. So you do the software and then you also built, we built this platform for this yourself. whole platform, wow. uh, the chassis, everything. So we really used uh, a lot of simulation in the early days to do suspension geometries, uh, chassis stiffness and all of those loading cases. Um, but then we also used simulation a lot for the vision systems that we're building to try and see what they would do predictably. So we use a combination of forward-looking sensors, cameras, LiDAR, uh, some radar. Uh, and basically we're mapping the terrain ahead of us in real time. Mm -hmm. um, we're also using vision cameras to actually determine what type of terrain is ahead of us. So we use the shape of the terrain, and we also use the type of the terrain. And then we have AI models that predict the best performance for the vehicle in real time while you're driving. Wow. Yes, precisely that. Is I take all the information from hardware, software, and AI, and I convert it into understandable data mm -hmm. or information. The vehicle can take all this information to make uh, better informed decisions and to uh, enhance both safety and performance. So originally when we were building this software, it was really focused on the person who's going out, maybe it's their first or second time driving off-road. They don't have a ton of experience. They want something that can you know, help them to have the best experience possible and help them feel confident going off-road into these mm -hmm. challenging conditions. What we've realized now is that there's benefits to that customer, but there's also benefits to even you know, the commercial sectors. So areas like mining or logging deal with all these challenging conditions. So now we've realized that this technology can actually help make those vehicles more efficient, make it less likely that they'll get stuck. It's kind of a fundamental problem that we're solving, so there's a lot of different applications for it. But interestingly enough, if you solve some of those hardest edge cases in off-road, you're actually solving the hardest cases on-road as well. And how has ANSYS simulation helped you build this? Without simulation, I think we'd have a very hard time building yeah. something like this, especially, you know, we're a small team, we're a startup here in Canada, and with limited resources, you have to do stuff efficiently, and yeah. simulation means that you can do things efficiently. So you say it's pretty essential to a startup company for yourself? I'd say it would be near impossible to do something like this. Well, there you have it. The frontier of extreme mobility would simply be unattainable without simulation. And if we can conquer a challenging environment like this, just imagine what we can do for your regular commute. Tune in next time as we take it all back to the track, one of the most storied tracks in all of motorsport. I'm Miss Emma Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation.